Oh, I'll show you what you get in America Town. Bring that link what? up. Oh, um, this what? fake pizza that you posted here. That Jesus Christ. That doesn't even look. Well, right. oh, that ain't fake. That is a Garfield. What shaped is that? Pizza. What does that mean? Garfield Eats, the Toronto, Ontario's hottest new restaurant. What the fuck is that made out of, though? It looks like someone, like, fucking burnt some a circular piece of cardboard and then, like, cocked it. Like, for Just a that. second. Like, I was going to say. Some, some sealant on the pizza. And then... <laughs> <laughs> to say, yeah, it looked like a burnt tortilla with some fucking pepperonis on it. It looks like some fucking bullshit fat, fat ass snack I would make at one in the morning. Seriously, the, the, the yellow, the yellow on the pizza looks like fucking sealant cock. Like it's that same, yeah. like when it yeah. dries, that expanding foam shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like when... <laughs> Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. It probably tastes delicious. There's a reason, but goddamn, the presentation looks like a fucking 1 a.m. high idea if I've ever seen it. Like, just. Oh, no, it doesn't taste good. Random on a fucking tortilla. It's horrible. Yeah, I don't oh, know. God. It doesn't look like it has any sauce, though, either. Like. Well, yeah, that's what that glop of shit is on it. Yeah, people have continually compared this business to something that Nathan Fielder Honestly, Fielder though, invented. how is it not? Garfield Peroni. Oh my god, why would... what? Just put, the, just put Garfield in front of everything. It's clever, right? Why, why the fuck... What? What did they do to that poor pizza? Why? Oh, no. $20 for these... One of these trash piles, too. You know what that pizza looked like? You, bring up you know, the like the you know, like the candy. Remember, like, so have you guys ever had that that candy, like the little gummy candy that you put together to like make into like burgers or pizza and shit? It's like a little yeah. type of thing. Like it looks like someone made like a giant pizza out of like little fucking fruit gummy candy bits. Like honestly, though, it looks. Like some sort of a, a abortion from an easy bake oven. It's not good. Yeah, and then threw in some fucking burnt uh, burnt subway steak in there on there. Yeah, just put some fajita peppers on there. Perfect. That's yeah. what that's what we want. And onions. Now we all know that Garfield is the absolute most like most glaring symptom of like. Marxian alienation and fucking like corporate. Oh souls man, here we go. Everyone, take a shot. We've we've mentioned the first communist leader of the night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we well, almost, no, here's where I'm going. This. Almost made. How ironic. <laughs> that they, the Get your bingo parts ready. Will shut down temporarily due to a landlord <laughs> dispute. Uh, oh man. I'm sorry. I had to. <laughs> Fucking you guillotine so. Garfield, son of a bitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> God damn right. I mean, don't get me wrong, Garfield's a trash cartoon and the creator deserves Whoa. to be Whoa. Head, but... Whoa. Garfield is love, Garfield is life. Mm. Lasagna cat. Love. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a meme to put up on screen too. Oh man. I remember growing up thinking this this cat gets me and then slowly realizing no no this yeah. <laughs> the writer is just lazy and doesn't feel like actually making a legitimate character cartoon yeah you realize how nihilistic Jim Davis really was <laughs> I don't like doing anything. I want to eat. It's like a fucking. It's Garfield is like a basic bitch Tinder profile now. Like I like pizza and beer and tacos. Like, I am not like other cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like 
to travel and taco and sleep in all day yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i'm i'm so quirky yeah if Garfield it's, like what liked watching sports, he'd be he'd be like eighty percent of Tinder profiles. Oh God, yeah, no, it's. But though, those are still better than the people who hold up a fish. Those people tend you know, to be the worst. Yeah, I don't. I don't usually. I don't usually search around for uh, guys on Tinder. So I've heard of this. But I I don't uh, I don't I and I've seen I've I've seen it sent to me, but I don't I don't search around. Yeah, that's why I just like I have to, I feel like I should specifically mention that like the the male equivalent is out there. It's just hilarious. In uh, oh, no, the travel I liking travel and tacos and hiking too is those are gender neutral right there. Like to I like. <laughs> completely like guys are just as guilty of the whole i like tacos and traveling and beer and shit like that's a that's across the fucking board the only like that in the fucking office oh my god oh my god you know that's that's a show i'm glad is over honestly because that means the the less i have to fucking hear about it yeah, but then we'll, the, then our generation is going to have that nostalgia for it as well like Oh yeah, I mean they do, but the Zoomers already make fun of us for it, so they're they're all have a hard on for friends for some fucking reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh god, my ex loved Friends, man, and he wasn't even old enough to like really remember right. being on the air. I don't I mean, he was alive. He would have been like eleven when that shit got canceled. Well, see, the thing is, what they're doing is in is making fun of the fucking normie he talking you know, is what's happening because like the, and someone made this point too zoomers are making fun of millennials for the same reason that millennials make fun of the millennials or other millennials <laughs> like, like we make fun of people who fucking base their entire like uh, their entire existence their personality on on their Harry Potter house, or the fact that they watch the office. Yeah. Pause this partway through. We don't want to play the whole thing. Yeah. This, there, that's the perfect freeze frame. Oh, Pam. Oh, I, man. Jenna I, Fisher's looking good. I love the way that she doesn't have sleeves, but rather her shirt just melds yeah, this, into her hands. This, uh, Meat Canyon is the artist here, and he really um, captures how god awful the this show is um this is a reason i actually like this show but it is peak fucking normie I'm shit for searching sure. for the gym to my pam i dude I, 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 I couldn't i couldn't even begin to count how many times i saw that line used so it's many pretty times. fucking cringy Look, I just watched a show from Michael Scott and Dwight. Everyone else is just background noise. Yeah, that's what everyone says. And that's why it's like, once you've watched it once, watch a different show then. Like... You gotta admit, Michael Scott's a funny guy. I character. mean, sure. Steve Carell has lots of funny roles that aren't The Office, though. So, you know, watch those. Does he? I mean, are we talking Evan Almighty here? No, or what? no one's talking about Evan Almighty, except for you right now. No one has any interest in Evan Almighty. No. You know, Bruce Almighty was pretty good. Evan Almighty was just straight up. It really was. It was. It was. It was. It uh, was. You know, trying to uh, trying to be something that it had no business being. It really. I'm almost as ashamed of Steve Carell for starring in that shit as I am of Nick Cage for starring in Left Behind. Honestly, though. But then again, you know, Nick Cage needed that money. Left Behind was a pretty sweet paycheck. I mean, you have to think he had like $21 million in debt at one point. He had to sell off his T-Rex skull that he had, for God's sake. It was, it was tough. It was a Dinosaur bones and Madame Lawlery's mansion are cheap. Yeah, well, you know, 
he he when he already had to sell his obelisk and his T Rex skull and his Superman number one, you know, times were tough. He had to do anything he could. These yeah. are all things. Yeah, also uh, Nick Cage will literally role. take like any role that's given to him. He, well that yeah. was why. He was that so he was that that much in debt that he literally did anything that, you know, called him to fucking play a role. Yeah. He was that destitute potentially. He was looking at that. That's why it was basically just banging out, you know, any script that came across the table at him. You know, he was he was that guy. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if uh, what if he's doing um, better. I mean, yeah. Well, his his dad. His, his dad is you know Francis Ford uh, Coppola. So that was his uh, uncle. Yeah, uncle. Yeah, uncle. Yeah. And and uh, Francis. Okay, so fun story. When he was fifteen, Nicholas Coppola asked his uncle if he could try out for his movie. His uncle told him to fuck off and start his own career. No nepotism from Francis Ford yep. Coppola. Uh, yep. That's good, I guess. But in fact, he literally tried to block Nick Cage from entering the movie industry just to add another hurdle in front of him to like make sure he was the real deal or whatever. Like Francis Ford Coppola was not going to fuck around with getting some shitty nephew of his a job that he didn't that's deserve. Cool, yeah. I guess. But and then Jason. Nick Cage actually changed his name to avoid. Uh, being associated with his uncle because he didn't want the Yeah, I figured the that was the case. Um, yeah. Uh, possible, possible the unpopular man's a true opinion, artist. though. Um, and, and actually not really because My- Michael Scott's actually said this. Um, um, or Michael Scott. Uh, <laughs> fuck, Jesus. What's this, what's this fucking... You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, what's, uh, Michael what's, Scott. What's the fucking guy's name? Um, I don't know. What is his name? Office. The Office. Dwight. Andy. No, the the fucking Jim. guy. I'm just talking about the actor. Um, My, Steve Carell. Steve Carell. Yeah, Steve Carell? Chris, yeah. Anyways, Steve Carell isn't funny outside of his movie roles. He's not. He's. I don't think no. he should be even considered a comedian. Like. He's also I mean, said that himself too. He's actually said he's not funny. He just get he plays funny roles. But yeah, he was funny on the Daily good, Show. He's good at being loud. That he's he's one of those uh, yeah, sketch well, comedians that's loud and dumb. Yeah, is his character. He does it very well. Um, the funniest thing I ever saw him do on the Daily Show. There were two bits. One was just vaguely about legalizing medical marijuana nationwide in, like, 2003, and he was like, Marijuana! Uh, like, some say it's medicine for the crippling disease known as being alive. Yeah. And then the other one was uh, an Even Stephen segment he did with Stephen Colbert. With Stephen Colbert arguing in favor of Christianity, and Steve Carell arguing in favor of Islam. And so it was just funny for him to say, well, actually, my friend Stephen, uh, you have yet to see the guiding light of Allah's bright shine, inshallah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> he's really, uh, really something else is Steve Carroll. Yeah, well, he's good at scripted roles, but yeah, he's not, I, I, I think a lot of people actually see him as a comedian, and he's he's not really like I don't. I'm pretty sure he never did stand up. Like he might have done sketch comedy, but I mean, still following the script and everything. Improv. That's where he started. What's that? He started in yeah, improv. Yeah. That's what he does. But uh, yeah, no, he. I don't think he's. I don't think he's that funny outside of his roles. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, he has his moments, but he's not in a he's hard, a hard like, joke telling funny way, but in a situational world building kind he's, of way. He's yes. a lot. That's why he was good on The Office, because improv people are good at coming up with situations and then, like, semi realistically and humorously guiding themselves through them, but they can't come up with, like, yes. jokes. And yeah, things like exactly. That. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, him and Steve uh, Colbert have. Uh, a lot of similarities in that regard. That's why they work so well together. Because 
Steve Colbert that. is a boring, boring ass individual. He's a kindly, uh, like neo lib, middle. Uh, he's he's rich. Yeah, don't, I mean, don't, he don't get me wrong. I would go to his cookout. Like white but suburban it's, Christian it's dad, not, who's like Bradley Whitford from Get Out. I would have voted for Obama a third time. Yeah, if I exactly. Could. It's it's disingenuous at best, unfortunately, because I don't see him out there on the picket line. 